What's going on guys? In case you missed my unboxing video just a few days ago, I managed to pick up a 2010 unibody MacBook. Now I already love this thing as it is, but you guys know me and I'm sure you're the same way. I really want to upgrade this guy. I want the speed of an SSD, I want some more memory, etc, etc. So I will be doing a memory upgrade in the very near future. But today's video is going to be all about this guy. This is the data doubler from OWC. This is basically going to allow me to replace the optical drive in this machine. So this will go, you know, something like this. And it's going to be able to hold one of these guys. This is a, a solid state drive. This is just a little 60 gigabyte drive. And what a lot of people think I'm probably going to do is do like a SSD RAID 0. Actually, I'm going to create a fusion drive. And main reason for that is because I'm not going to get the full advantage of a RAID 0, number one, because this machine only has SATA 2. This is a SATA 3 drive. But also mainly just because I don't really need a RAID 0 speed in this, in this machine here. I just want, this is a good secondary machine. I don't need blistering performance, but I want an upgrade. So I think a fusion drive is going to be a great way to go. So without any more rambling, I know you guys just want to see the upgrade, so let's go ahead and get to it. So here we have everything we're going to need to perform the update. We have the MacBook itself, we have the solid state drive, which like I said earlier in my case is a 60 gigabyte OCZ Agility 3, and here we have the OWC data doubler. You can get this right from MacSales.com, I think it's around $35 to $40. Uh, it's pretty high quality. I mean, I, this is some like metal or some, like really, really tough plastic or something. I, I think it's metal, but either way, it's, you know, it just, it's going to sit in your laptop. I mean, it's not really going to fall apart on you or anything like that. And it's very simple. Basically, the SSD uh, just plugs into this little SATA interface here, mount it, and then this will actually take the place of that optical drive. So the optical drive slot in the side there, it'll still be there, but the actual drive will be out. But uh, I don't use optical media anymore, so this is a very logical upgrade for me. Now OWC was also kind enough to provide the actual tools that we're going to need and we need a, uh, I believe a size 00 Phillips head screwdriver, I think a Torx T6 and maybe a T7 uh, screwdriver. There's also this little tool here which we'll, we'll use to wedge up some ribbon cables and things like that. So without any more rambling, let's just go ahead and get started here. So we're going to go ahead and uh, we're just going to move this off to the side for now. And now the first thing you have to do is turn the MacBook over. And on the body here, you'll see eight screws. It's just two, four, six, eight. We're gonna use our size 00 Phillips screwdriver to take those out. And by the way, before I get started with that, you'll notice here that this is kind of like peeling up. This is a very common problem with this, and I have registered on Apple to get a new bottom plate for this, so this will all be going away whenever they send it to me, but once again, that'll be just as easy as removing these eight screws, putting the new one on, screwing it back in, and we'll be good to go. But anyway, back to this upgrade. We're just gonna go ahead and take out all of these screws. All right, so all eight screws are out, and now I'm just simply just going to put my fingers back here by this hinge here, and you can see it kind of starts to pull up. And it's on there pretty snug, so I mean, don't be afraid to like break anything. It will come off, and well, there you go. And so here we have the inside of the MacBook. And so right here, you can see we have a 250 gigabyte hard drive. This is a 5400 RPM right below the memory here. And what I'm gonna be doing in this video, that's fine and dandy, I'm actually gonna be taking out this optical drive and in its place, putting the data doubler with a solid state drive on it. And I'm gonna be making a fusion drive out of those, which if you don't know what a fusion drive is or you wanna know how to create one, I have an entire video on my channel on how to do that, not only on a real Mac, but also on your Hackintosh as well, if you're interested in that. So be sure to check that video out on my channel. You could just you know search CPU Confusion Drive. I'm sure it'd be like the first result. But like I said, we're gonna be taking out this optical drive. So let's go ahead and get started. The first step in getting this optical drive out of here is to loosen this SATA connector. So I'll go ahead and zoom in a little bit to show you guys that as, as good as I can without getting crazy blurry. And we're gonna use that little pry tool, which uh, hopefully it'll focus, probably not though. And uh, we're simply just gonna go like this and we're gonna pop it up. But of course, be careful. We apply, apply some pressure, but that's all it takes, and the static connection is now free. The next step is to remove this little Phillips screw up here. Go ahead and try to move the camera a bit. That guy right there needs to come out. That's obviously holding this in place. I'm sure it's one of the many, though. So yeah, these are definitely in there pretty tight, so you do have to apply some pressure. And the next step is to remove these four screws up here. We have this screw here, this guy here, one more here and one more here. And now that all four of those have been removed, we have four more screws to take out, which are Torx T8 size. So we have two here, and then we have two right over here on this side. So once again, this probably is not gonna focus, but this is a Torx T8. Uh, it was included with the data doubler as you guys saw, so it's very convenient. So we're just gonna go ahead and take these guys out. Now that all those screws have been removed, you'll notice that this bracket can now come free. 
And so now we're just going to simply place this off to the side. Now this is going to be really hard for you guys to see. This whole unit right here is the optical drive and down in here above the battery here, there's a little Phillips head screw so we have to go ahead and take that guy out. Alright, Apple decided to get really sneaky with this next screw. The next screw is underneath this black thing right here. Now this is plastic, so the screw is actually like right here underneath. You can kind of see the screw like right here, so just put your screwdriver in there. And then once you start twisting, you'll, you'll just, you'll find it. Like you'll, you'll notice that there's some kind of pressure there. And then you'll notice right here, actually that will never focus, but there's a screw on there. Very small. The next stop is going to be right over here to that black screw up here. That guy needs to come out as well. And now coming back over here, the last Phillips screw is once again kind of down in there. It's this guy right here. So that's the last guy we need, and once we take this out, we can move on to actually installing the data doubler. Now with all those screws out of the way, this thing is actually free to come out. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our nylon pry tool here. So we're going to get underneath there, and as you can see right here, this is separate, this little black part here. This looks like to be like you know, the Bluetooth and the Wi-Fi antennas and things like that. Uh, so that does not come with it. So be careful that when you remove this that you don't you know, go pull it on any of those wires or anything. And now what I'm going to do here is I'm putting my finger right underneath this part up here to hold this part up and I'm going to take it on this hand by you know this corner down here and simply pry it up like so and now you've removed the optical drive. Now there's actually two things we need from this optical drive. The first one being our SATA connection right here. So this is you know your, your SATA power and your data connection and Apple just puts them out into one ribbon cable that goes on the board. So we're gonna save that. And we also need this little bracket here. Now this is just held on by two little Phillips screws. So just take your Phillips screwdriver and remove that bracket. And just like that, the bracket is now removed. Set your optical drive off to the side for a rainy day. So I've moved the MacBook off to the side for now, and what we're going to do now is we're going to install the SSD to the data doubler. But really, really quick before I do that, I want to take this time to say that make sure you like align your screws and make sure you know where they have to go. As you can see, like I have all the ones that came out at a time in a row. Where do they go? So like all the ones from the optical drive held in that held in the optical drive are right here. All like you know the eight from the actual bottom of the laptop are there. So make sure you know where those screws go. Otherwise, you're going to have a fun time trying to figure out where all those go. So now I'm going to install the SSD into the actual data doubler and I found this to be kind of a tedious process and I'll show you guys why is that this is how it's supposed to go just like this and you can see that you know the SATA connection should just slide right into the SATA connection however it's slightly off right or I really shouldn't say off but it's off you know like just enough so that this won't go in straight just like this so what I found that I have to do is kind of angle it like that I mean that's literally all it takes but now that is enough to where I can slide it right into place and now it's in. So that is you know, kind of a pain, but once you get it in there, it's fine. And now we're simply just gonna secure this drive into place with two screws right there. So here we have our SSD in the data doubler. Now what we have to do is reattach this little bracket here from the optical drive onto there, as well as our little SATA connection. So I guess we'll go ahead and we'll do the SATA connection now just because, well, it's that easy. And now we simply have to reattach it, the bracket, like so. And just like that, the SATA connection as well as the bracket, I've been installed onto the data doubler. So now the way that this data doubler goes into the MacBook is, well, you can tell by the SATA connection. Remember that SATA connection attached right here to the board. So the SATA connection obviously has to be right there. So we're simply just gonna slide this data doubler in. Of course, make sure you watch out for these wires here, as well as this guy right up here. And of course, this entire module. So you don't wanna stretch any of those wires or anything, but make sure that it is seated correctly. So being very careful, just slide this guy right into place. Now before we go screwing anything back in, we did get a couple of screws with our data doubler. These are just you know black little Phillips screws and uh, we are going to be using some of the original screws, actually most of the original screws, but there are a few times where I, there's actually one right here where this little blue piece is actually thicker than the optical drive was, so that's why they give you these little like longer Phillips screws. So in a couple of these spots, we are going to need to use the longer ones that came with the actual data doubler. So it's kind of hard to see uh, behind this little module here, but there's actually a screw right back in here that we're going to use the black screw that came with the data doubler for. So we're going to go ahead and put this guy in its place. Now coming back over here, we're going to replace this black Phillips screw. This guy's pretty long. Uh, this is one that actually came with the MacBook though, so there's no special OWC screw here. 
We're simply just going to put that guy in its place. And screw him in. And now it's time for that very, very small, very, very fun hidden screw that went in sideways here. So this is very tricky to do because it's not like the optical drive where we could kind of see where it had to go. So really you're just kind of going in blind this time. You can actually kind of see it here. Uh, that's how I know that I actually got through into the hole it needs to go. Right now it's above the data doubler, but now that it's pushed through, we should be able to kind of push this back and screw it into place. Alright, that was kind of a pita, but I got it. Now if you guys remember, there was one down here by the battery, kind of hidden down here. That's another instance that we'll need to use one of the screws that was included with the data doubler. So go ahead and use one of these and screw that guy in. And now we're going to replace this screw over here. This is the screw that came with the MacBook, so there's no special screw here, so simply just install it like the way you found it. And now we're going to plug in that SATA connector. So all you do is you simply line it up and push down. And now really, the data doubler part is done. This is all secured into place, so now really we just put the MacBook back together. And that involves bringing back this guy right here. Uh, if you guys can see in the video, I do have some dust and things in here, so this is a good time to clean this out if you haven't already. And now to do this, you simply just put it back pretty much the way you found it. Just make sure that all the screw holes line up, make sure there's no wires in the way, because once again, you do have a bunch of wires running through this guy right here. So and that's for like you know your Wi-Fi and your Bluetooth. So you really want to be careful that it, you know you don't break any of those wires, because if you do, you're gonna have some wireless connectivity issues. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my Torx T8 screws back in first, and that's these guys up here. So put this guy in his place. Screw it in. We're going to do that four times all the way across the top. And now we're going to repeat the process with the next four bottom screws, which we have right here. These are, once again, all from what came with the MacBook. These aren't any special OWC screws. And so here we have the completed upgrade. All the screws are back in place. We have a 60 gigabyte OCZ Ajoti 3 in the data doubler taking the place of the optical drive. And we still didn't touch this, but we still have that 250 gigabyte 5400 RPM hard drive here. Now, like I said earlier, I'll be making these into a fusion drive, and so I won't be doing that in this particular video, but if you guys want to know how to do that, like I said earlier, I have a full video tutorial on how to do that. Not that hard. And so the final step here, I'm going to replace this back panel. Make sure everything's good and nice and secure. And now we put those eight screws back in. Holy crap, that's dirty. So now to see if it works, I have my UniBeast flash drive here, and yes, I did say UniBeast. This is a Hackintosh installation flash drive, but it works flawlessly on a real Mac as well. So we're simply going to plug that into the USB drive down here. We're going to hit the power button. Nothing's blown up so far. Light's on, you can't see it, but the light is on. So that's a good sign. I'm going to hold the option key on the keyboard, and now we should be brought up with our drive selection. And so now we're going to go over here to this EFI boot, which is our UniBeast flash drive. And we're going to go into Disk Utility and make sure both of our hard drives are there. And so we, here we have our install OS 10. We're going to continue and agree. And as you can see right there, we have Macintosh HD as well as Macintosh SSD. So here we go. Both drives are detected just fine. And from here, I will make that Fusion Drive array. And so there you guys go. That's how you put two hard drives inside of a MacBook. This OWC data doubler is a great solution and it works across many different lines and many years of MacBooks. So be sure to definitely check it out. But thank you guys very much for watching. I hope the tutorial helped. I'm at CPU Kid on Twitter. Also be sure to check out RoachTechnology.com and stay tuned for my next MacBook upgrade video.